All right, and welcome to another episode of Raul's World of Synths. My name is Raul. Today we're going to be looking at a Dofer module called the Dofer A149-1 Quantize Stored Random Voltages. And we're going to be looking at what exactly it does, uh, explain some of the front panel here, and then maybe see a little demonstration of how I set this patch up, or how you can patch something similar if you want to. Um, so, before we get into that, let me unpatch this, just so we start with a blank slate, so to speak. And uh, then we'll go into some of the descriptions of what's on the front panel here. And once you know that, then we can go into a little bit of a patching example. So, this is our module right here, the A149-1. And uh, according to the manual in there, uh, it says that it is based on another module, or it's based on the idea of a module called uh, the Buchla Source of Uncertainty. Um, it has its own claim to fame out there. Um, and this is kind of a variation of that here. Uh, there's two sections to it, which you can see outlined here. The top section is quantized random voltages. And then the bottom section is stored random voltages. Uh, and we'll talk about uh, how exactly these two sections differ from each other and what you can use one for versus the other. It also has an additional breakout section, which gives you random gates that are tied to the quantized random voltage section or the clock coming into this section. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that briefly. Uh, just so that you understand that this is actually part of this, or a second part of it, I should say. Okay, so let's just jump right in and start talking about what we have here. Uh, we have several different inputs here. Uh, we have CVN in here, and then we have a CVN dial, and then we have a couple of outputs, as you can see, and then we have a clock in. Uh, before we talk about CVN in, uh, because that's going to actually generate questions. I'm sure you look at it and you say CVN in. Okay, what's N exactly? Uh, well, N is actually at the heart of what makes this whole section kind of work. Uh, N is going to re represent the state that the top section is actually in. And the state that it's in, or the mode, for lack of a better word, uh, is going to determine what comes out of these outputs right here. So let me talk about that a little bit and then we'll actually come back after I talk about it and we'll talk about how CVN and in is actually gonna work for us and then this attenuator here, um, how that's gonna help us as well because for the most part, this controls the level of CV coming into CVN in, but since we don't know what N is yet, uh, let's go into that a little bit. So N is going to be the, the state or the mode of uh, voltages that can be output here. Uh, and it goes all the way, if you look at this dial, from one all the way at the far clockwise position to six. So if you have the dial set to one, uh, certain set or possibilities of voltages will appear at the outputs. If you move it to two, then a different set of voltages will appear at the outputs. And number three, different set of outputs, four, so on, five, so on, six, so on. So six is the maximum setting of possibilities on this particular dial here. And you can manually adjust it right there. So that's what this dial does. Hopefully that uh, kind of cleared up exactly what N is. We're just talking about what state that it's actually in. And when we start to hear what actually happens later on uh, with N in these different modes, it'll actually become a little more clear because right now I know it's still a little bit abstract. I had to go through it a few times to actually get it in my head. Um, so that's the manual control of N. Uh, we're going to talk about these two here, but I want to just jump back here to the clock in 
And uh, this actually makes the whole little module kind of go. Um, I'll demonstrate that here without any sound or anything, but I have my voltage controlled LFO right over here. And I can put a gate signal in, or a square wave, right here. And I feed it into my clock in, and then you'll see a little motion. So it basically determines um, the speed or the frequency at which this is going to output a voltage. Every time that it receives an input at the clock in, it outputs another voltage from either one of these outputs. The brighter the LED that shows up here, the higher the voltage, and the dimmer, the lower the voltage. So just a point of reference there in case you're wondering about the lights there. It's a pretty good light show. And that, that brightness thing only actually um, applies to the outputs on the 149. Uh, we'll talk about what the lights on the digital random voltages represent a little bit later. So that's the clock in. And for the most part, it's straightforward. I mean, you increase the frequency, the frequency of the lights increases, and then you decrease it, and the frequency of the light decreases. So pretty straightforward. Let me unpatch that, since we just wanted to see what the clock in is going to do for us. OK, so as we were saying, as the clock in signal comes in, a different voltage is triggered here. Um, and now, at the very bottom most position, this is a pretty interesting thing, uh, the actual number of possible outputs here at the top or the bottom is going to be identical. It can only have two possible uh, random outputs. Uh, however, they're different on the outputs. Uh, the top section, or the one that's labeled N plus 1 right here, the output is going to range between 0 and 5 volts, but it's going to be in 1 volt intervals, which is better known as an octave. So for the most part, only octave voltages are going to spit out from this output right here. Now, immediately below that, the one labeled 2N is actually going to output voltages that are going to be at 1 12th of a volt intervals, better known as semitones, what we know as uh, in an octave. So it's going to be, you know, uh, semitones coming out of here and octaves coming out of here. Um, and basically, I mean, this is kind of the, the thing that I kind of drew from all of this, the manual and experimenting with this, is the lower the number of possible states, or the n value, the, uh, the lower the number of possibilities that come out. So it's fairly random here at 1. Let's go ahead and, and hear what that sounds like, just so you know it starts to become a little more tangible. And uh, we're going to start by listening to this one right here, the n plus 1. So I'm going to feed a clock in. And actually, I need to go into my mult. Uh, because I want to feed it in through the filter just so we don't have a straight oscillator uh, going in there. So I'm going to use the gate or square wave coming out of here to trigger both the clock on the random control voltages as well as my filter over here so that they're simultaneous so that way there's no constant oscillator tone coming out of there. So I'm going to take the output from my multiple and then the clock in right there is going to be one of those. So this clock signal is going to here, and it's being copied here, and then going to the clock in here. And I'm going to use that same uh, gate signal, or square wave, and feed it over here to my gate. So every time a signal goes out from here, it's not only triggering a different random voltage here, but it's also uh, opening and closing my... Uh, my low pass gate over here. Um, and I, I chose to kind of have it in combined mode, but that's a very little thing. If you have any questions about this particular module or the mode that I'm in, uh, it's not really changing the timbre of my sound that much for the most part. I'm just feeding it in and turning it on and off. Um, 
I also have a set of videos that explain this in great detail. So if you're interested in that, then check it out. So we have our clock source coming in and it's triggering random voltages. You can see some action happening over here. Um, and you can also see the lights on here fluctuating. So every time the clock signal goes off here, a random voltage is coming out here. So let's start with the top one. And we're gonna actually start in state one down here, or N1. And I'm gonna take the output from there. And I'm gonna feed it into the input, or the CV input, number one, of my A110, standard VCO. And then I'm gonna take the output of my VCO, triangle wave, because that's my favorite. And I'm gonna pipe it right into my gate, and we'll hear a little bit of sound. And so we're gonna be listening initially to state or uh, value for N number one. Here we go. Oh yeah, and I need to plug in that thing as well. Huh. That might help. So here we go. So that's state one right there. So right there you can hear that there's only actually two notes actually happening right there. A low and a high. And as I increase this, I'm gonna to go to state number two. There we go. So we're now we have three possible values coming out from the M plus one output. Now if I bring it up to three, I'm gonna have four possible values coming out of here. And there's my fourth value. And then I can go to number four, which is not actually on here, but. Very high pitched right there. So that's my setting at number four, and then I can bring it over to five. And so it just alternates through those different values. So essentially you have, you know, one through six and you have all those different modes right there or values of N, however you want to think about it. And then all the way at the top, you have the maximum number of possibilities coming out of here, at least without any uh, CV coming into N. And that gives you a uh, total of seven possible output states coming out of the top quantized random voltages or the n plus one whatever you want to call it okay and then I can bring it back and if I'm right about two it should be back to three possible states at the output. And all the way back to one. Back to two states. So as I increase my frequency, those states are still only two. It's just they're happening faster. And it just constantly alternates. 
you can't really pick out any kind of pattern right there. You can't say, okay, yeah, there's four, four of the low note and then five of the high and then, you know, four of the low note and four of the high and, you know, there's no pattern there, at least discernible anyway to the ear. So that's the N plus one output. So I'm gonna unpatch that. And there's my just straight oscillator. It's still being clocked uh, at the gate right here. So now I'm going to take the 2N, and again, we're in N value of one, and we're gonna input that into our VCO and see what happens. Am I gonna actually use uh, CV1 though? Here we go. And right there, it has the same value as it did, well, to an extent anyway, at the M plus one. Um, at M plus one, it had octave uh, voltages being spit out, but here we have semitone intervals being sent out. So now if I go to number two, interestingly enough, I actually now have four possible states or notes output here at the 2N output. So quite a different sound coming out of either one. There we had octaves, here we have semitones. Let's compare that, so I'm gonna unpatch it. Let's go back to N plus one. Unpatch that. And then I'm going to go here. There you go. So now I'm going to go to a value of 3 for N. And at value 3, we actually have 8 possible output states here. And then I can go to four. And at four we have 16 possible states coming out of here, 16 different possibilities. And at five, we have 32 different possibilities. And we're, gonna, we're not going to actually sit here and listen to all 32, or maybe they already happened. Or I guess you could go really fast and just know that, yeah, there's 32 possibilities there going out. And then, of course, you can go all the way down to 6. And then you have even more possibilities coming out of there. You get kind of a, a data or computer type sound that you would hear like in a movie or something like that. So, while both of the outputs are related to this dial here, they're quite differently sounding anyway when they trigger a VCO. Okay, so I think we got the idea of that. Well, let me unpatch that. And I'm gonna temporarily unpatch my oscillator. So we can talk a little bit about the stored random voltages section now for a little bit.